main thing that hit me with my depression is when my father passed away when I was 15 and that made me worse and I just fell into deep, deep depression straight after he passed away and then that got replaced with anger just ended up nearly killing me basically Like I'm known in my, the family as a comedian, the joker and I'd be really telling people jokes and I'd, I'd be able to make everybody laugh and feel, feel happy but yet myself I couldn't inside I was just like I don't feel happy. You're much more quieter and much more um, drawn within yourself a lot of I suppose in your own world. When you see yourself you're not enjoying life and you see every day is just another day, it just gets you really down and you question life and then you just find yourself down in this pit. I was just standing still and watching the world go by and I would just be like I don't feel part of this world whatsoever. And I walked for about a mile, mile and a half and I came to a bridge and basically I stood on top of the bridge and I was looking down. Is it worth continuing on? You know, worth going. And I talked myself out of it. I was like, no, you're not getting the best of me. And I turned around and I just walked home. My son died in 1996 from suicide. And there was no hit for me in 1996. So every time I hear of a suicide, it just brings everything back to me. So I went to Balahora Development in Charlton, and there was a man there called Dave O'Grady. And he helped me set up Charter Suicide Awareness. And from 2008 until now, we do set up CIS courses. We do uh, National Suicide Day, we do balloons, and we leave off dogs to remember all those who have died of suicide. People with depression and anxiety can put themselves in the most awful of situations and to take themselves over the game, basically. That's the scary part, that we don't know what's going on within you, you know, what you're thinking or anything, or, you know, if you're feeling anything. I was upset when you were very, very down. It was stressful on me, but I was mainly focused on you. I was feeling very anxious. It was like thinking there was something going bad going to come my way or something was going to happen to me. You feel like you have this shame about you that you have to keep quiet. When I play my guitar, I was very able to express myself and play and I just started writing based on events and stuff and I started coming up with my own music and I just came up with just very self-expression without being judged kind of a thing. Well, basically this is my first guitar. She's fairly banged up at this stage and she's fairly worn down as well. But it's, I used to be just in my room just playing her for hours on end, just non-stop and just going into school then my guitar teacher caught a flood. He just to be like he just be like, how do you learn all that so quickly? And I'd be like, I just love playing constantly. And it was that music is what saved me, I said. I could see that you had a keen interest in music and you had a lot of music experience and you were well into your guitar so you seemed really suited for the course. When we first met, what was your initial perception of me in college? Um, angry. You, you were sort of nicknamed sort of Angry Tim. You know, you said you, said you, you seemed like a nice fella but I don't know, I suppose it was, you, it was quite confrontational when you spoke to people. In level five, I didn't really necessarily see a temper. I could see at some stages, if you had any disagreements and stuff, that you would get a little bit angry with other students. Um, as the year kind of went on then, I think you realised yourself that you just walk out of the room and remove yourself from the situation. You know, we know that sometimes you might be a bit more uptight than other days, and if you are, people, I suppose, would sort of leave you to your own devices that sort of day. Me and you had that talk, because... I was not in a good place and I told you all about my depression and anxiety and basically what, were you kind of shocked when I told you that stuff? Well, to be honest, I was shocked, um, but when 
I thought back a lot of things fitted in and it made sense then. When you told me that you're uh, suffering from anxiety or depression, I was relieved because we found out what was wrong with you. I just remember just saying, why is there, why am I so afraid to be public about it? Because it's not, it's not like I've done anything bad, you know, it's not like I've hurt somebody or I do anything bad to people and yet you're felt, you feel like you have this shame about you that you have to keep quiet. I was just like, no, because I knew that was just the anxiety, just saying, you can't talk about me. There's a lot of people still frowned upon it, there's still people going, while well, they're saying they should keep it to yourself, it's something that you don't want other people to know, but I think everyone's got to do what's right for them. Some people might not be comfortable, other people know. I went to my doctor, I was very nervous of going, because I'd be like, oh, be, I'm the only one with this and I'll be judged and whatnot. Went in, told them, and they were like, okay, that's fine. They were like, it's perfectly normal to have this. I was referred to Mallow. I, they talked me through what they're going to do. They said we're going to give you a therapist, and I would put on medication. And with the therapist, then uh, I was just finally able to start talking it out and letting everything out and start talking about myself. And through that, then when I came home, I was no longer nervous about talking about my depression stuff. Was I had all these medical people saying there's nothing to be ashamed, there's nothing to hide. You can talk to anybody about it, and that's when I started coming out about it. That's where I am now, basically, and it's all thanks to my, the help I got from around, from my doctors, and my family, my friends, and even the college with all my tutors and stuff. It's just great help. But it's just a case of realising, Joe, you know, that you have support here, and Joe, you know, we all, we're all there to help. Everybody needs help at some stage of your life. What's the main difference that we've seen between the way I was and the way after getting all the help? You actually are happy when you're after getting the help. You actually are happy about who you are. No longer I'm just afraid of my future, I'm looking forward to it and I just know I can make it a good thing and, I, and with this I hope whoever watches it no matter how bad they find the situation they're in or how down they are because believe me I've been there that you can turn it around, you can go out, you can get the help you can just do it in a positive way and it's me amazed how quickly you can change. I actually have a tattoo with a saying on it that I really think summarises it that pain is temporary and though your scars may remain I may be done, but I will rise again.